If you want to perform the, the flow measurement experiment, you first have to recognize all the parts. At the right bottom, you will see a big white water tank. The water tank is connected to the pump. After the pump, you will see a, a rotometer that you will use to measure the flow accurately. If you follow that branch, you will see a ball valve and a control valve that will allow you to let the water flow through that branch. At the back of the system, you will see the steering for the pump. You can use it to switch it on and off and you can control the speed of the pump. The water is flowing into the, into the open channel and you will see at the back it, that you have your triangular overflow and at the end of the setup you have a drain which collects all the water back into the white tank again. At the side of the channel you see that you, will, that you have a, a small pipe sticking out. You can use that pipe to measure the actual height of the water in the overflow. If you want to measure the flow through the channel accurately, you have to determine the angle of the triangular overflow. If you then go to the library, you can find form formula 10.38 in Perry's chemical uh, handbook. And that will show you how you have to calculate the flow through that channel. If you actually want to perform the experiment, what you can do is you can change the speed of the pump in 10 steps. For each step, measure the flow through the rotometer and measure the height of the, of, the, of the water in the overflow. If you document everything in a table and plot a graph out of it, you can see how accurate your measurement has been. Do not forget to make an estimation about the error margin of your measurement. If you're performing the experiment, always make sure that there is enough water in, in the reservoir, otherwise your pump can be damaged.